Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. I am Joseph F. Alsis, Addiction Master. I'm going to be reading an article. Usually when I read articles, it has to do with science or mental health. This is more of mental health, but it could cover both. I'm calling it Keeping Your Mind Healthy. As I explained in some of these videos, I flag certain articles, certain sites that catch my attention. And this is another one. However, like some of them, I don't see an author's name. The webpage says skills you need. Keeping the mind healthy. And there's a whole list of subsections to the left, which I thought were interesting because I can click on them and gather some information, do some podcasts on them. But I don't see an author's name, like who wrote it or... So I always feel bad when I see that. I'm going to read it anyway. I think there's some cool tips and these are generalizations, but they could provide some information on the difference. I like to distinguish between physical and mental health, how we treat them both differently. So I'll read this article and, you know, give my uh, train of thought and what's going on. No, I looked again. I don't see any name. All right. Keeping your mind healthy. We sometimes seem to be in the middle of an epidemic of mental health problems. There are higher levels of depression, anxiety, and other mental illnesses than ever before, particularly among young people. The big question whether there is anything we can do to avoid these conditions. We all know the importance of eating five a day or five portions of fruit or vegetables a day to maintain physical health. While the science behind the precise number is probably somewhat dubious, the importance of eating well to maintain health is not in doubt. But what about the mind? Are there things you should or should not do in order to keep your mind healthy? Nobody is suggesting that it is possible for everyone to avoid all mental health problems. However, many scientists would agree that there are things that can be done to maintain a healthy mind. Sound mind, sound body. There is a certain amount of truth behind the Latin tag mensana in corpo sano, or a sound mind in a sound body. There is no question that people who have chronic problems with their physical health can also suffer mental health problems. This is probably not surprising because it is hard to cope with constant pain or the debilitation that goes with a long-term physical health problem. However, on a more superficial level, looking at yourself physically can also make you feel better about yourself. It is certainly easier to cope with high levels of demands on your time and energy if you are physically fit. What though should you actually do to keep your mind healthy? Eating the right food. A good diet is essential for physical health. A growing body of evidence suggests that it also makes a difference to your mind. The Mental Health Foundation notes that a good diet is important for mental health. It also just suggests that a diet can play a role in the development, management, and prevention of several specific conditions, including schizophrenia, depression, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, and Alzheimer's disease. That is not to say that diet can control these conditions, nor that it should be looked upon as a panacea or cure-all, or that other treatments should be stopped in favor of a particular diet. However, diet may play a role alongside other treatments in the management of these conditions. I'd like to note the breakthroughs we're making in understanding gut bacteria and how important it is, and those studies are becoming rampant and they're Showing a solid consensus. Superfoods. Really? A few years ago, superfoods were everywhere. This is a term used to describe certain foods with very high quantities of particular nutrients. From the early descriptions, you might almost have thought these foods had magical powers to improve mental and physical health. 
Most sources now, however, suggest that the term is simply a marketing tool. The European Union has even banned the use of the term superfood in marketing except where the claim is backed by credible science evidence of a proven medical benefit. The Mental Health Foundation notes that fewer than half of those who report mental health problems consume fresh fruit every day, compared with more than two-thirds of those who do not report mental health problems. The issue here may be somewhat chicken and egg. Does a poor diet contribute to the problem? Or does the problem cause a lack of interest in eating healthy? Either way, there is little doubt that feelings of health and well-being are more likely if you consume a balanced diet. With the correct balance of fats, carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins, minerals, and water for you. There's plenty of links connecting to other nutrition pages. The importance of exercise. David Linden, a professor of neuroscience at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine, suggests in an interview that the most helpful thing that anyone can do for their mind was to take 30 minutes of aerobic exercise every day. Linden explained that if we do not really understand what behind the beneficial effects of exercise. However, scientists have observed that exercise causes all the blood vessels in the body, including your brain, to dilate. This changes the metabolic capacity of the brain. Exercise also makes the brain secrete certain chemicals which help neurons, which help keep neurons healthy and able to change. All this sounds very like a very good thing for the brain and the body. Keeping your mind active. There has been plenty of speculation in the press over the years about useful ways to slow down brain degeneration and aging. And in particularly, how it might be possible to overcome Alzheimer's disease and dementia. One suggestion is that doing crosswords and other puzzles or brain training that keeps your brain active might be helpful. However, this is likely to be far less helpful than physical exercise. This is because doing puzzles usually uh, uses only a small portion of your brain and does not do anything for the rest. The effects of exercise, however, are much wider. However, if you cannot do exercises for some reason, doing puzzles is likely to be better than doing nothing. A little common sense added in there. Social media, smart, smartphone addiction, and mental health. There is growing evidence that there is a strong association between smartphone use, particularly social media use, and poor mental health. It is not entirely clear what causes the link. However, there is a considerable speculation, blah, speculation that social media leads people to make comparisons between their own life and the carefully curated lives that they see on screen. It seems that however much we understand logically that nobody's life is perfect, it's hard not to think that what is presented on social media is reality. It has also been speculated that fear of missing out drives us to wish to remain connected in case we miss something important. A little tip then. Social media is designed to be addictive. It is important for anyone using social media to understand that it is designed to be addictive. The currency of like supplies external validation and releases various chemicals in your brain that makes, you, makes us feel good. The rapid changes in content and ability to just keep scrolling also discourage time-bound use. There is growing evidence that it is important to get into the habit of switching off your smartphone periodically, and not just at night. For example, many schools are now banning phone use during the school day. Some have even banned phones from the premises. This helps young people to switch off. Many workplaces now accept that the pressure to be connected is damaging and are taking action to prevent, protect their workers. Some, for example, are starting to encourage workers to have someone else change their email password before they leave for a holiday so that they cannot check their email while away. In France, Workers now have a legit, a legal right to not check emails or receive work calls outside working hours. A lot of this is, I think this is a growing phase personally, but I'm up for being informed and checking the information. But this is too new to, you know, it's just like TV and radio. It's, it's a little different, but we'll see. I'd like to see a lot of studies on it. It is important to reset pressure 
Oh, is it? It is important to resist pressure to be always on. Tell people that you will be turning off your phone and then do so. Try taking time out from technology. Spend time outside or reading a book, perhaps, instead. You know, I love going camping, sitting on my lane in my hammock, reading my book. You know, everything in moderation. The good mind. There is more to mental health and a good mind than simply avoiding dementia and other mental illness. The mind is shaped by all the experiences, ideas, and thoughts to which it is exposed. To a certain extent, then, you can choose what you feed your mind just as you choose what you feed your body. What you choose to consume for your mind can be described as your mind diet. Your mind diet can make your mind more or less healthy and certainly more or less interesting. Garbage in, garbage out. People talk about books that are trash or pulp fiction. By this they mean light, easy reading that does not challenge the mind. Reading a book like this every now and then does no harm. Just as an occasional visit to a burger joint does not affect your health. But a diet of junk food alone is not good for the body, and a diet of undiluted pulp fiction is not good for the mind. Your mind diet. It is worth taking a few moments to consider your mind diet every now and then. Ask yourself, how good is my mind diet? Is it what I would describe as a balanced diet of different types of ideas and subjects? Or do I tend to focus on more than one type of input? In particular, what is the balance between junk and healthy mind food? What effect is this having on me as a person? You might need to ask friends and family to give you honest assessment if you are concerned about this. What can and should I do to improve balance? Tip. If you struggle to construct an ideal mind diet, then try thinking about someone whom you admire and consider what kinds of thoughts, ideas, and experiences may have shaped their mind. Think about what that would look like for you. Now here I'll make a note that I I do something called the you know wheel of interest. So usually it's a you know, it's like five or six type of uh, themes. It'll be science, funny dog videos, religious, political, um, humankind type stories. Techno technological breakthroughs and innovations and I make sure I keep going in that wheel so I don't get too focused so this is good advice one that I recommend The challenge of maintaining your mental health. Of course, just as physical illness can affect anyone, so can mental illness, regardless of lifestyle. If it affects you, you should always consult the doctor. Nobody is suggesting that you can cure mental illness simply by consuming the right diet and taking exercise. Although this can contribute to the management of your condition. Science does, however, suggest that there are many things that we can do to keep the mind and body as healthy as possible and contribute to improved outcomes in the event of illness. Common sense suggests that it is relatively easy to eat a balanced diet and take exercise, and that the benefits to both mental and physical health would be, or would more than outweigh any inconvenience. Turning off your smartphone periodic, periodically is also likely to pay dividends in the long term. And that'll be it for maintaining mental health, keeping your mind healthy. A lot of cool things in here. I think there's a lot of generalizations, but there is a, uh, you know, a running common sense that goes with a lot of these. You know, we all don't adhere to them. Surely I don't, even now I'm trying to exercise more, eat better. I think I got the mental health aspects down but not the physical I think it's important we get some tools to help us we're all not perfect it's important to say a diet's not going to do it alone possibly and exercise but doing the bolt going to help you maintain puzzles are better than nothing and keeping the brain interested could be important 
and keeping your interest shifting, focusing. And I like to do deep dives. So I might keep a wheel of interest, but when I started with the political side, <clears throat> I had to do deep dive and I treated it like a college course in a sense and delved into political science and all this and that. Or sometimes do that with philosophy or just generalizations and then narrow it down to focus to get more informed and get better at it. But I think this is good advice. I will put the link in the descriptions. To the left, there's a whole bunch of personal skill links you can hit. And there's some great um, personal skills for the mind. Keeping your mind healthy, mindfulness, reflective patience, or reflective practice. Keeping a diary or a journal, positive thinking, self-esteem, managing your internal dialogue, the importance of mindset, introducing neuro-linguistic programming, creative thinking, understanding creative thinking, creative thinking techniques, memory skills, and then it goes on for somewhat more. Uh, I, any site that will give you information that's not all woo garbage. I mean, I might um, pick apart certain angles they use to get to the point. But all in all, generally good information. Keep everybody healthy. Keep everybody safe, especially now. I mean, we can all have conspiracy theories in this pandemic. We could entertain wild thoughts of fancy but at a foundation it can't hurt to be physically fit have a good immune system and still have a decent grasp of reality yes so masks this and that and i think it is important to have a good immune system to be ready for these things and we all can't prepare and especially with the mind it comes on quick sometimes, unexpectedly. We should pay more attention to it. So here's hoping to you, to you, to you all keeping your mind healthy. Until next time, take care.